So this is the Nokia 9 PeerView. This is Nokia and HMD's latest smartphone. And it's an Android One phone, which means a couple of things. Uh, one, it's running a very pure and clean version of Android. Uh, there's no bloatware, and it's basically Android the way Google intended it to be. And two, it also means that this phone is guaranteed software updates for at least two years and security updates for three years. And the biggest highlight with this phone is the cameras on the back. It has five cameras, but I sort of feel like this is Nokia's or HMD's sort of publicity stunt uh, to sort of grab headlines with this phone, sort of just like a cheesy attempt to get people to pay attention to the Nokia 9. Because if this phone had one camera on the back or even just two cameras on the back, I don't really think a lot of people would be looking at this phone as closely as they are right now. And the five cameras on the back, I think would have been a lot more useful if they were five cameras of different focal lengths, but that's not what you're getting here with the Nokia 9. Instead, you're getting two RGB sensors and three monochrome sensors, which to me feels like a little bit of overkill and a little bit unnecessary. And these monochrome sensors are designed to capture more depth data, more exposure data, and more detail. But there's a lot of phones out there that take amazing photos that don't have monochrome sensors. One of those cameras is the Pixel 3, and that phone has one camera. And the Pixel 3 is arguably one of the best smartphone cameras on the market right now, if not the best. And this phone is using five of them. But the biggest problem with this camera is not the fact that it has five cameras, it's really the way that this camera performs. Uh, the camera app is really slow, really sluggish, and some people have even reported that they've had issues with the camera app crashing. I haven't had that problem, but this camera app is very slow. Uh, you can notice it a lot when you're swiping through all the different modes, there's just this big pause or delay when switching between modes. And that delay or pause gets even more amplified as you swipe quickly between the different modes. Uh, but the biggest issue that I've had with the performance of this camera is the processing. So if you're taking a photo, it takes a good five to six seconds to process a photo. And you won't really notice this if you don't look at your photos immediately after you take them. But if you're like me, and you do like to look at your photos immediately after you take one, just so you can see if it came out right or if you need to take another one, um, you're gonna be stuck on this processing wheel of death for five to six seconds. And it just makes for a really slow experience with this camera. But I don't wanna harp on the camera software too much because this is something that can be easily addressed with a software update. And HMD is actually very aware that the camera has some issues, so they do plan on rolling out an update. But if you have this phone right now or you plan on buying this phone before the update comes out, this is the experience that you're gonna have with this camera. From an image quality standpoint, the Nokia 9 is a very capable camera. It takes photos with great clarity, sharpness, and detail, but my biggest complaint about this camera is the way that it post processes photos. And I mean post processing in terms of the way the images look. It has a very big tendency to underexpose. And in certain situations like a bright sunny day or a high contrast scenario, like a low light shot with a lot of uh, highlights from street lamps and things like that, uh, this underexposing actually works in the camera's favor. But when you take the camera indoors in average lighting, uh, your photos are gonna come out a lot darker than you want them to be. And I had so many photos that were underexposed that Google Photos actually told me to fix the lighting issues in a bunch of my photos. And again, this is a post-processing problem, so it can easily be fixed with a software update. It's not a hardware issue. So I do believe that the Nokia 9 has a good camera and potentially even a great camera. It just needs a little bit of tweaking and the experience is gonna be a lot better. The rest of the hardware on the Nokia 9 is fairly run of the mill. It's made of glass and metal, which feels really nice and it's very comfortable to hold, but it really isn't all that different from a bunch of other phones out there. It also doesn't have a headphone jack, so if you care about that sort of stuff, this phone doesn't have one. Uh, the display on the front is an AMOLED screen, so it's really bright, really vibrant. Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't have a notch 
or a hole punch, which some people may like, but because it doesn't have either one, the bezel on this phone are actually a little bit thicker than normal, especially on the top and bottom. Now underneath the display is an in-screen fingerprint sensor and in-screen fingerprint sensors on smartphones right now are not that great. And I've had my fair share of experiences with in-screen fingerprint sensors and the Nokia 9 is by far the worst experience that I've had. The first three days or so, this in-screen fingerprint sensor was practically unusable. I would say it had a 5% or less success rate in unlocking the phone. And there were so many times where it failed to unlock that I was actually forced to use my pattern unlock. And it got to the point where it was so frustrating to use this fingerprint sensor that I just skipped it entirely and just went straight to my pattern unlock. But somewhere around day four or day five, this fingerprint sensor started working and it started working fairly reliably. I would say 80, 85% of the time it actually unlocked on the first attempt. And I'm not sure what happened to fix it. I know HMD is aware of the problem and they plan on issuing a software update. But as far as I know, I haven't received a software update unless HMD somehow silently updated this phone, which I'm not even sure is even a thing for an issue like this, but it works now. I just don't know if I can confidently say that this has been fixed for all the Nokia 9s out there at least not yet. Everything else about the Nokia 9 is just fine. It has great performance and a solid spec sheet. It is using last year's Snapdragon 845, but I don't really think that's that big of a deal. It's not like the 845 all of a sudden became a slower processor just because it's not the newest one anymore. And battery life on this phone is also really good. I get five to six hours of screen on time fairly consistently, and that's with messaging, emails, social media, watching YouTube, and playing games on a daily basis and this phone lasts me all day, every day with no issues at all. But the big question with the Nokia 9 is, is it worth the $700 price tag? And at 700 bucks, it does undercut the iPhones and Galaxies of the world. So you're saving a little bit of money there. But in this particular price bracket, I don't think it's the best value. Uh, the OnePlus 6T is actually cheaper than the Nokia 9 and I think offers a much better bang for your buck. You're getting much more powerful specifications. You're also getting Oxygen OS, which is basically like stock Android, but offers a ton more customization. And if you're willing to spend an extra $50 over the Nokia 9, you can get yourself a Galaxy S10e, which gives you the entire Galaxy S10 experience at a lower cost and you're getting a really great camera and a fingerprint sensor that is extremely reliable that's not in the display. But that's it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up button down below if you did. Subscribe down below as well if you haven't already so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.